Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly TV show called Team Chicago Challenge. To get a hold of me, the main thing is to get my email out there. It's teamdan45 at gmail.com. Teamdan45 at gmail.com. I put these clips up on YouTube because I have to educate the American people. I firmly believe the education system in our country now is ill-educating our populace. A good example, just the other day, the ABA, that's the American Psychologist Association, came up with a warning that masculinity is harmful. How many shrinks do you know? How many psychiatrists do you know? Psychologists do you know? Most of them are pretty wimpy guys. You've got to admit that. I mean, there aren't many motorcycle racers in psychology. So that may be part of the problem. The other thing with this uh, uh, women's movement, this new women's movement, which is goofy. So let me say, is masculinity harmful is a joke. It's the dumbest statement I've ever heard. And because of this, I'm going to lead me into another story I'm going to tell. But this, let's, let's start out right here. Let's understand. There are men and there are women. I know there's a half a percent or a third of a percent out there that's gender challenge. And 90% of that, 90% of that is because we have a society that says it's okay to be goofy. It's okay, and of the one hundredth of one percent of people that may really be gender challenged, the rest is all nonsense, and that's what I have to say. You want to debate me? Like I said, everything I put up on YouTube, I am willing to debate anybody, anytime, any situation. I'll bring the TV cameras you provide the hall, and I will debate anybody on anything I talk about on YouTube. So, what this um, um, study comes out, or whatever the report says, is that masculinity can lead to poor health choices, higher rate of suicide, and substance abuse, and early death. It's reports like this that can lead to confusion Men are men. Men are made to be men. Being masculine is normal. Being feminine is normal. Women normally are feminine. They should be. They should have the motherly instinct because they are in charge of raising children and having children. The whole society, which something I brought up the other day about this study that was found or this letter that was found in 1919. Now let me set that in. 1919. They found a communist plans for destroying Western civilization and then uh, get control of publicity, get people's minds up, create, divide people in the groups, get uh, the young in, away from religion. And that's what we are. This, is, this has been a hundred years. Now it's exactly a hundred years. This report or this was found, this was the plans of the communists, and now it's coming right out and open. I mean, these people are whack jobs, and I will debate any of them. Masculinity is what makes men great, and it involves many things. Manners, honor, men should have honor, men should have respect, men should have character. What is character? Character is how you behave when nobody's watching you. Humility, not thinking you're the greatest. All those traits are what makes men great. That's why America is the greatest country in the world because men were allowed to be men, women were allowed to be women. There's no reason women cannot run businesses, no reason women cannot exceed, no, women, no reason women cannot be president of the United States, state senators, congressmen, governors. That has nothing to do with masculinity and femininity. So here's another goofy idea that comes up every once in a while to challenge what's going on. Because we happen to have a president right now 
who represents masculinity. Here's a guy that's made a lot of money. Here's a guy that loves women. So let me read into, here's a, the subject I really want to do, and uh, we're going to get into that right now. Because my contention is, I had a discussion with a friend of mine about um, making money, the economy, the, what drives the economy. And I say what drives the economy is love, is wanting to please your wife, wanting to have a wife, wanting to find a wife. That's the normal drive of humanity. And the better you are at picking women. So this friend of mine, he said, well, when I was 18, all I ever thought about was where we can get our next beer. Well, when I was 18, I wanted to have a good job, I wanted to have a nice car, and I wanted to attract good-looking women. This is normal. Attract good-looking women. Think back. Think I mean, I'm going to tell a story about the past, but just think of that guy that goes down in the coal mine every day, 12 hours a day, six days a week. They didn't work uh, Sundays. Six days a week, 12 hours a day, just to provide for his family and to make his wife happy. That's what the driven power behind, I mean, why do you think millionaires want to be millionaires? So they can attract good-looking women. There's nothing wrong with attracting good-looking women. There's nothing wrong with having a good wife. There's nothing wrong, wrong with choosing good, good, good wives, good girlfriends, having good people around you to find the family, to build the family. That is what made America great. And these, all these different groups, all these Marxists, Leninists, Stalinists, Maoists, progressives are trying to tear the fabric of American life, and the normal drive. So I'm going to tell you a story. Now, everybody knows Abe Lincoln, right? Everybody respects, well, a good majority of people respect Abe Lincoln. So let me tell you a story about love, and then maybe you'll understand what I'm talking about. And it gives me an opportunity to draw. You know I love to draw. Okay, so uh, state of Illinois is here, right? State of Illinois, Lake Michigan here. All right. Springfield is here. And then the Mississippi River runs along the state of Illinois, goes by here. We've got Tennessee, got Kentucky, we got uh, uh, Mississippi then, then you got uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, but the Mississippi River runs down here to New Orleans. Now, why am I bringing up the story of New Orleans and Abraham Lincoln? Okay, the first time Abraham Lincoln is a young man because he was born in 1809, where his first trip in a flatboat down to New Orleans took place in 1828. So he was only 19 years old. And that trip, they uh, came down the Ohio River to the Mississippi River, and then they took, and what they carried back in those days in a flatboat, it'd be farmers in the Midwest, this region in here, and uh, Abraham Lincoln came to Illinois, I think, when he was five or six. Originally, he's from Kentucky. Then they lived in Indiana. Then they came to Illinois. And his father's farm was right here in uh, Charleston, uh, right about there. So Abe Lincoln, young Abe Lincoln, went out and wanted to create his own, make his own money and work, not just be a farmer. So in... Uh, 1828, he made the first trip, and uh, they took corn, bacon, live hogs in a flatboat. So that was his first trip. The trip I'm talking about is his trip in 1932. So 1932, Abe Lincoln was 21 years old. And that trip started out in Springfield, right here, and they took the Sagamon River to the Illinois River. But they just got a few miles out of Springfield, and they came to New Salem. Okay. And his boat got stuck on a dam right there in New Salem. The dam was set up because there's a sawmill there. They used 
drive a water wheel, the water wheel, then we hooked up the sawmill to cut timber. So at that point, I believe he spotted this young, the scale was uh, mm, 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 four years younger than him. He spotted this young gal, and her name is Anne Rudledge. And she was born in 1813. Abraham Lincoln was born in 1809, so she's four years younger than him. Well, Abraham Lincoln may have just spotted this gal, may have spent some time there. So here's the power of love. This is my definition of love and the economy. So then he goes, takes the Sagmore River this way, catches the Illinois River, comes down this way. The Illinois River joins the Mississippi River. He goes all the way down to New Orleans. Okay? They sell their goods. They sell the lumber for the boat. He may have made 8 or 10 or $12 or maybe made $20. I mean, whatever. Then he took a steamboat back up to St. Louis, which would have been right here. Yeah, maybe right here. Okay. So then Abe Lincoln goes from St. Louis, walks cross country, probably passing through, and all the towns along here, all the women he might have met, New Orleans, whatever, he, he was exposed to the slave trade, and they say that's one of the reasons he was so anti-slave, because of his experience in New Orleans and his experience of growing up on U.S. Highway 31, but that's a whole other story. But anyhow, so every eight or ten miles, there's a town. That's how towns were laid out. It's one half day's travel for the farmer in the furthest area. So it isn't just counties or whatever. Towns are generally eight to ten miles apart. So to go from St. Louis back to Springfield is over a hundred and some miles. So he would have Easily gone through 10 to 12 to 14 towns, not counting towns he might have stopped at on the river boat back up to St. Louis. But he went all the way back to New Salem. And I firmly believe it was his love of Anne Rudledge. Now, they never got married. He did tell his law professor many years later that his only true love in his life was Anne Rudledge. Now, everything's up for debate there. This is my contention, and it just shows the power of love. In fact, Anne Rutledge did not die until 1835, so there was a period of three years that they could have spent some time together. I understand that she was interested in education also, and also at that time, we got to remember that Abe Lincoln um, uh, got involved with the Black Hawk War, which would have been in 1832, and he was, he was uh, elected captain of his uh, uh, militia group. So Abe Lincoln coming back to New Salem, and then he ran for state rep. He got elected. It was his first time he went to the state capitol, which was not Springfield at that time. In fact, when he went to the first state capitol, he argued to move the state capitol to Springfield. That was one of his noted things when he went to uh, the state capitol. So that's my little thing about love. A good example, Abraham Lincoln was so infatuated with this young Anne Rutledge, even though she was betrothed, that was the term. In other words, the parents probably made a deal. I don't know if she, I, no, I don't think she married the person she was betrothed to. I don't think he was even around. But Abe Lincoln had a fatuation, was in love with, and that was a driving force. That's what I'm going back to. The driving force of the economy. The one reason America is so rich, the one reason America is so great, is people are allowed to be in love in America. We don't have pre-arranged marriages. You have to go out there and you have to win the heart of someone that you're in love with. And that's one thing that I find with this new society, this... Uh, ill education that's going on in their school. In fact, why are they taking away teaching cursive, teaching people how to write? Do they do not want people to write love letters? They think everything's got to be in a little one, one or two finger dot dot on a little uh, keyboard when we have better keyboards. 
No, this is a driving force. Love, women, masculinity, femininity, being in love, being attracted to the opposite sex. There is nothing wrong with that. Whether it's your young fascination in the third grade with the girl of the other sex, or the fifth grade, or the eighth grade. But I find this education system, for whatever reason that they come up with, are not pro-love, not pro-man, woman, marriage. You know, it's delay everything. Nobody's grown up until they're 26. They could still be on their parents' insurance until they're 26. No one's got to grow up. Nobody's got to have babies. No reason to have babies. I mean, we can bring in people from other countries. Why have babies? This is the insanity. So going back to uh, the shrinks and uh, the ABA and masculinity is uh, harmful. No, masculinity, the true meaning of masculine. When someone said man up, when someone says grow up, when someone says the, the cowboy attitude. Here's, a, here's another. Here, President Obama and Hillary Clinton, both, both of them, both of them, I, they make me laugh. They always make me laugh because they're so out of it. President Obama would say, oh, that cowboy attitude, or uh, Hillary Clinton would use that term, the cowboy attitude. They both use that term. And they were referring to Ronald Reagan. Now, Ronald Reagan never pretended to be a cowboy. He did have horses. Ronald Reagan did play cowboys in movies. But Ronald Reagan did have that cowboy attitude. And I'm happy to say Donald Trump has that real cowboy attitude, that can do. When Donald Trump got elected, he said, we have to change things. We have to fix things in this country, whether it was the problem with Korea, whether it's a problem with the economy, whether it's the problem of all these jobs leaving America, how do you bring them back? You cut taxes. So that's why I'm a big supporter of Donald Trump. And like I said, I am willing to debate you, anybody out there, any time of day, any place. My email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. And uh, it is right for men to love women. It is right for women to love men. This is what makes the world go round. And this is one of the reasons. America. No prearranged marriages in America. That's not acceptable in America. The idea of going out there and being the best you can be. To be honorable. To have humility. To have proper manners. To have character. To have honor. That's what masculinity means. It's not evil. It's not taking advantage. It's not bullying. I hate that term bullying. Man, get rid of it. When I ran in bullies when I was a kid, you punched them out. This whole idea of bullying online, turn off your computer. You can't be bullied. Get off your phone. Quit playing a candy smasher. Quit wasting your time on, on your little machine. Quit texting. Call someone up. Talk to them. Invite people over. Meet with them. Sit down with your friends. Fall in love. Find someone to be in love with. I mean, we don't have to change the entire society for one half or one percent of people that are gender confused. And I know the education system is trying to make everybody gender confused. No, there are men, there are women. The vast majority fall in love, be in love, love, wait, oh, oh, it almost sounds like I'm preaching now. Remember, it was Jesus Christ that changed the world 2018, 19, 17 years ago. Changed the world, actually it was 2000, 1900 and 90 years ago when he preached love. He changed. It wasn't eye for an eye anymore. It was love. Love became the most powerful. You tie in Christianity, love of thy neighbor, along with Western civilization, and we got a great world. 
And let me add one more thing. I, gotta, I have to say this. I have to say this. There was a congressman from Iowa. In fact, I'm going to reach out to him just recently. They're accusing him of making statements that were racist or something like that. Let me explain. Was it Charles Town or something like that in North Carolina where a group of people wanted to tear down a statue? So let me explain. Most of the morons on ABC, NBC, CNN will not explain the situation accurately. And I'm going to explain it real quick. The Nazis in that area or the KKK wanted to have a legal march to protest taking down a Civil War statue. They had a legal permit to march. Now, they are undesirable people. Half of them are morons. Half of them are goofballs. Half of them don't have three brains to rub together, three brain cells to rub together. I want those people to march. I want everybody to see the KKK, the Nazis, the fascists, the, the uh, extremists. The, the extremists on the left. I want those people to, to march. In the meantime, George Soros, multi-billionaire Marxist, sends in his stormtroopers, the anti fad who are fascists also, and that created the problem in that town. The police should have protected the Nazis. When the Nazis wanted to march in Skokie, even though people were outraged, it was their right to protest. If you're going to have free speech, you have to put up with morons. You have to put up with idiots, whether they're racist, whether they're haters, whatever you want to call them. I think Nazis are a joke. I think the KKK is a joke. I want those people seen. I want you to see what they look like. Nobody's going to be attracted to them. So don't be afraid of them. But to send in the anti file which is just the war extreme even, and be fighting in the streets. I know someone got killed from someone running someone over. But that has nothing to do. So whatever Representative King might have said and has been, I mean, I'm willing, I'm going to send him an email to his office. He wants to get together with me. I'll do 10 clips with him and put them up on YouTube to explain what he said. To, I know these reporters are all crummy. All goofballs. I mean, when I ran for Congress, I couldn't even get reporters to even talk to me. Three or four reporters. That's how anti-American the press is. But don't confuse. And then he, I know King's been talking about Western civilization. Western civilization is not racist. Western civilization is continued on to the United States of America, where we have combined Christianity and the right to own property, the right to rub your neighbor, the right to be left alone. That's one thing I, I wrote a letter recently and I said, you don't have to love your neighbor. You don't have, have to be bothered by anybody. You have the right to be left alone. But you also have the right, you can love your neighbor, but you can tell your neighbor to get off your property. You can love your neighbor and tell your neighbor to stay out of your bank account. You can love your neighbor and tell your neighbor to just leave you alone. You do not have to be charitable, but most Americans are charitable. You don't have, don't confuse. And I'm going to end it with this one. This is more than enough to say. Don't confuse charity with taxation. When you got the mayor of New York, you got this new governor in California, you got the new governor in Illinois, all goofballs. I'll debate any of them. They're all goofballs. This idea of national health care, or I'm going to have city health care. No. People should be concerned with their own health. The health insurance system in this country, because I know I've been self-employed. I bought my own insurance. I know how expensive it can be. But Obama screwed it all up. Uh, Affordable Care Act was not affordable. So when you hear, I mean, we are divided in this country. There's no doubt about it. But I firmly believe if people would start rubbing each other again and listening. I mean, how many people are going to watch this clip? I have no idea. But I'm doing it because I think it is important. Love is the most powerful value we have in America. 
Love thy neighbor, but you're not required to love your neighbor. So I'm going to end on that. I think uh, that's enough. You can always uh, contact me at teamdan45 at gmail.com. I can tell you my racing, e my racing website is uh, teamchicago.tv. I haven't updated in a while. I have to get around to that. Walk with Dan website, there's nothing up there. I'm going to use that to put my political clips. So you can always go to YouTube. You're watching YouTube now. You can go Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing. And you can see some great motorcycle racing action. I have been blessed. You can go to Dan Schmidt Politics and you see more clips where I explain what is the right, what is the left. I am tired of being discriminated against. I'm tired of being called uh, uh, the far right. No, I am the far right, but I am love. I am freedom. I am smaller government. The right is not Nazis, all that is big government, that's on the rough. All that is progressivism, Marxism, it's all the same. It's all the same baloney, it's on the rough, it's not what you want. On the right is freedom, on the right is love of thy neighbor, on the right is Western civilization. One man, one vote. Country of the people, for the people. We are the bosses. The government, anybody you elect, state rep, congressman, senator, state senator, U.S. senator, mayor, governor, they work for you. You are in charge in the United States of America. And every other country in the world could adapt to what we have here. The founding of this country was probably the second most important miracle since the birth of Christ. The founding of America is the continuation of everything Jesus preached. That's how great America is. That's why we're great. And don't forget, search on YouTube. I'm Dan Schmidt. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you understand this. And uh, love thy neighbor. And uh, have a good day.